Chapter 14 For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hast the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations! For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, and that did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof? That opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable ranch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed the land, thy land, and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saying the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession of the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have proposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. For the Lord of hosts has proposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina art dissolved. For there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. One really impressive thing that I appreciate about Isaiah, but that makes it, his reading is very hard for most of us to do, it takes a little bit of more effort, or a lot more effort sometimes, is Isaiah has seen the past, the, his present time, the time of the Savior living upon the earth in his ministry in Galilee, and the last winding up days. And he goes back and forth from one to the other, without giving you any instruction that as to what he's going. Because to him, they're all facts. They're all the same thing. And he hopes that we have some spiritual depth to us and we can recognize that. Now here he's talking about in the latter days. 
the gathering of Israel would be made possible by other nations. So at the time England did that possibly and some other countries. And they will make it possible. They will help Israel to come from all the nations of the earth to take up land in what we now call Israel. Those nations will champion Israel's uh, cause. They will support her with cash and in every other way they possibly can. And Israel will eventually become ruler over the countries that were her captors. And most of that will take place as part of the millennial reign of the Savior and the millennial peace. Now, verses 4 to 21 are a song of judgment against Babylon. Uh, now, Babylon represents um, wickedness all over the world. And the Babylon was to be trodden down and destroyed in an ultimate triumph of Israel. And we know that the city of Babylon the, and the empire of Babylon were destroyed totally. And the city of Babylon that existed at the time of Isaiah's prophecies was 85 miles south of where the present city of Babylon is. And that was just what's called a tell. It's just a big hill that's a dump of mud brick and uh, Euphrates River mud that they used to build stuff with. Uh, been desolate from the time it was destroyed. Nothing built there. Um, chapters or verses 12 to 15 talks about Lucifer, son of the morning. We know that Lucifer, not Lu Lucifer's other name is Satan. Uh, in chapters 13 and 14, uh, he deals with uh, Isaiah deals with the fall of Babylon, both the empire and as a symbol of wickedness in the latter days, the world and wickedness. And Lucifer, as son of the morning, is here. We believe exemplified. Uh, the title it actually means the king of Babylon, who probably was Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and the interesting thing is it talks about the kings of the earth a little later. And that the kings of the earth have their tombs, which he calls houses. But there's no tomb ever been found for the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, so far as I know, never been one found for him. And of course, there won't be one for Satan either because Satan can't die. He has no body to bury anyway. Verses 24 to 27 are Assyria, which was another empire that was north and west of Babylon and north of Israel, uh, sort of like on the eastern end of where Turkey is today. And uh, it was also used as an example of unrighteousness. And it talks about its destruction more specifically in Isaiah chapter 37 verses 33 to 38 I think about there it's a symbol of worldliness a symbol of wickedness and certainly they had their troubles with it uh, the burden of Philistia uh, is something that we know of today it's a judgment against the Philistines just as the burden of Babylon was a judgment against uh, the Babylonians but Philist Philistines were eventually overcome by the Jews, and the land of the Philistines became part of Judah, at least part of it did, and Judea. But when the Romans conquered uh, Israel, they renamed the area where the Philistines were as Palestina, which we would now think of probably more as Gaza, and Palestina basically was the Latin word for Philistines. And modern day Israelis, generally speaking, those that care, absolutely hate the name of Palestine. Because in Hebrew, it means the land of the Philistines, and they consider it theirs.